Hello and welcome to Wajak Noongar Country and the headquarters of the Western Australian Police Force. I acknowledge the Wajak Noongar people as the original custodians of the land on which we meet. And in the context of this important week, NADOC week, the theme, because of her, we can. The her is represented by Mother Earth on the Aboriginal flag, as depicted in red. In light of Because of Her We Can, and in building on this year's theme for Reconciliation Week, Don't Keep History a Mystery, I've considered this broader context alongside aspects of our own policing history for today's speech. Some of the comments I'll be making shortly are confronting and may make some people feel uncomfortable, but I understand that truth-telling is an important part of enabling and facilitating change. And so today, on behalf of the Western Australian Police Force, I would like to say sorry to Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples for our participation in past wrongful actions that have caused immeasurable pain and suffering. As the legislated protectors of Aboriginal people, police played an important and significant role in contributing to a traumatic history which continues to reverberate today. An example of that history, police officers were tasked with removing children from their parents, part of the trauma that contributed to what we now know as the stolen generation. I accept that previous laws, practices and policies deeply affected the lives of Aboriginal people and that police involvement in historical events has led to mistrust in law enforcement and the damaging of our relationship. The forceful removal of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander children from their families and their communities, the displacement of mothers and their children, sisters, fathers and brothers, the loss of family and resulting destruction of culture has had grave impacts. In addition, land dispossession, violence, racism, incarceration and deaths in custody have occurred through a history of conflict with Aboriginal people and police. The intergenerational impacts of this suffering continue to impact the welfare of Aboriginal people who are overrepresented in our justice system today. We cannot change the past, but we can learn from it. We can make amends and ensure mistakes are not repeated. From this day forward and in my time as Police Commissioner, I will take steps to heal historical wounds between police and Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people. I accept our tumultuous history. I acknowledge the devastating impact our actions and take ownership of being part of that problem. Today, I would like to commence a new journey in unison with Aboriginal people towards achieving reconciliation. I'm committed to working with Aboriginal people to improve our relationships and foster meaningful and positive change for future generations. I'd like to acknowledge the good work and achievements we've already made with Aboriginal people, especially in diverting youth from our justice system. But there is more we need to do. As I speak, I know that Aboriginal youth are more likely to appear in our courts than non-Aboriginal youth. Our initiative to improve the Aboriginal Cadet Program, which began in 2016, since its, its inception, 45 cadets have joined the program and earlier this year, five Aboriginal Cadet graduates became sworn police officers. I'm grateful to have two of those graduates from the program here today, uh, Constable Madison Eugle and Constable Jacob Collard, who raised the Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander flags 